What's up, good people? Welcome to Brutes Magoots Guitar Fuckery. Now, this is a new channel for me, so I'm going to do a quick introduction. I have a pretty successful horror collectibles channel. Uh, as you can see, I'm huge into horror, but I've always done guitar. I've been into guitar for about 30 years, and uh, I wanted to start a channel just so it made more sense to put stuff like this on a separate channel than my horror channel. So anyway, welcome to Brutes Magoots. Today, I will be reviewing this Dean Exile Select 7 Multiscale. Uh, I just got this guitar in, and uh, I gotta say, uh, it's probably the most conflicting piece I've ever owned. Uh, I've never done a review on any kind of equipment before. Uh, typically, I don't ever show this kind of stuff, but I feel like anybody that's looking at this guitar needs to hear and see what I'm experiencing with this guitar. Now, first off the bat, there's a lot of things to like about this guitar. Uh, I love the concept. The concept is fantastic. Uh, I love multi-scales, but I really don't like when they fan out away from me, uh, especially if I'm down here on the first and second frets. Uh, it's not natural for my hand to like reach out and extend past that. So I like that it starts right at the first fret and then progressively goes up. It goes from 27 to 25 and a half. Uh, so it does get more extreme here at the bridge. But uh, to me, when I'm playing, my hand is naturally in that direction anyway. So it's natural for me to palm mute. And this is comfortable, uh, especially as I move up the scale. Uh, my wrist just kind of wants to naturally lay this direction. So I really, really like the concept here with what they have going on. Uh, I also... I'm a huge fan of the Kaler um, tremolo system. I know a lot of people don't like it, but uh, for me, I don't use the bar so much, um, only if I'm doing certain covers or anything like that. So I really like the idea of being able to just lock it up um, for most of the time and then unlock it when I want to use it. Uh, I like So it's the best of both worlds for me as far as fixed bridge or a tremolo system. Um, as far as this, this guitar and this purchase, uh, and I, I, there's a lot to go through. I'm going to try to move through as much as possible, as quickly as possible. Um, overall concept is great. Unfortunately, the execution from the factory is absolutely terrible. And we will go over all of these things, all of these issues that I'm seeing with this piece. Especially at this price range, it doesn't make sense that there are so many problems with this thing. But it did check a lot of the boxes for me. As far as again being multi-scale, uh, I love the Nazgul and Sentient pickups. Um, I usually use like Fishman Fluence Moderns or stuff like that, but um, I'm lazy and like I don't like to unplug the guitar a whole lot. So it's nice for me just to be able to leave it plugged in. I don't have to worry about batteries draining or anything like that. And this guitar, despite all its problems, sounds monstrous, which I will do like a quick sound check for you guys. Um, but this is mostly going to be going over the build quality of this guitar. Um, yeah, so overall, I like it. I like the weight. Uh, it's not too heavy. In fact, um, I think my Solar uh, S1.6 is a heavier guitar than this one. Um, but this is quite comfortable for me. Uh, I also like the fact that um, the most of the scaling is done back here because it keeps my arm from having to reach out too far. Uh, I like things pretty stock as far as the 25 and a half inch scale and this does that for me and it kind of cheats it back here deep into the base of the body um, which I really like. Alright guys so as we look over this guitar and I go over the issues I want to go over the specs for you real quick. Uh, it is a South Korean made guitar which at $2,600 is insane. Um, you would expect a US or Japan made at that price range. Um, it is a three-piece bolt-on neck, uh, maple, uh, three-piece maple neck, uh, an ebony fingerboard, and then we have an Adler body. Um, it does have a, merle, a burled maple top to it. And then the finish is a satin natural black burst, which I really like. The body shape is obviously the Exile, uh, carried over from the Rusty Cooley model. Uh, it was a shame that they lost that license, um, but 
I really do like the feel and ergonomics of the body style from the Rusty Cooley model. Um, it's a 16-inch uh, uh, radius uh, fretboard, um, obviously 27 to 25 and a half multi-scale. The nut width, which I really like, is uh, 1 and 7 eighths. It's a rather narrow nut width, um, which I appreciate, especially switching back and forth between 6 and 7 string guitars. I don't really like wide necks. Um, it's harder to adapt back and forth for me, personally, anyway. Um, the crazy thing about this thing is, is that the frets on here are nickel frets, um, which is insane. These should be stainless steel frets, but uh, they are not. They are nickel, and at this price range, there is zero excuse to build a guitar that doesn't have stainless steel frets. Again, and I keep on going back to my Solar just because uh, it is way less than half the cost of this. has active pickups in there. Uh, it has the Evertune bridge and it has stainless steel frets and the build quality was very, very good for me. Um, it's As far as the controls, obviously we have the um, sentient Nazgul Seymour's in here. Uh, we have a volume and tone through a toggle selector and then we have a push-pull for changing the tone on the neck and then push pull for changing the tone on the bridge pickups. Um, I tend to find that I like them down, but uh, again, this thing does sound very, very good. Let's go over the issues. All right, so um, I had started to set this thing up myself, which is what I typically do when I receive a guitar. I got this about a couple days ago. Um, I started getting into it and realizing all the problems with it. So I, again, I got, that's why I figured I would show you guys what you get from Dean Guitars uh, for $2,600, which is pretty, pretty terrible. Uh, we'll start off with um, when I received the guitar, this pickup was actually loose. Uh, the screw had backed out of the wood, uh, the mounting screw, and um, they had used too short of screws in the assembly process. So they had actually mounted my pickups where when fingered at the 24th fret, I was about uh, seven millimeters away from the string, which is really insane. It should be about like two, a good starting distance is about 2.4 millimeters or so. Um, so they didn't even mount it with the right screws to adjust the pickup height properly. So I adjusted the pickup height and then um, I started to look at the standard um, adjustments as far as um, neck relief and intonation and things like that. Uh, neck relief was actually set properly. Uh, it has um, probably the perfect amount of relief in there and I'm assuming at this point in time that that is probably by accident. Uh, the fretboard was dry as a bone um, so I had to oil the, the, the board and let that soak in quite a bit. I was very thirsty. Um, and then I went to start doing the intonation on here and I found uh, just like a bunch of loose screws throughout here that weren't tightened down. Uh, and then all of the adjustments on here were just kind of out of whack. Uh, they weren't aligned. They weren't aligned going down the neck, uh, which I've even further backed off now anyway, but the string spacing was not symmetrical. Um, and then I started looking at what Kaler did as far as making his bridge, which was kind of upsetting. I mean, they basically just tacked on an extension here to be able to get the multi-scale. But um, as far as like quality, they don't even match the same radius on their own bridge for the extension. That's two different radiuses and it's two different finishes of, of black. Um, I don't know if it's picking up in the light or not, but um, yeah, it's two different finishes. They didn't even finish this piece the same way as they do the bridge, which is, again, this is a $2,600 guitar, and that's absolutely insane. So I started coming down here, um, messing with, again, the fretboard just to make sure what other problems I would have. And I found out that the frets aren't even leveled. Uh, there's places where I have high spot I think it's right here on the sixth fret, um, somewhere over here. Yeah, right here. Hear that? That rocking? That rocking is because the frets aren't leveled out. Um, there's another place on the board too where the frets have not been properly leveled. 
uh, that's where I come into. Thankfully, I guess that it is a uh, nickel frets because they're easy to work with and stainless, but um, I'm going to have to get out my trusty leveling block and, and sanders and polishers and re-level all these frets and do them the way that they should have been done. Again, $2,600, the frets aren't even leveled. That's insane. It gets worse though. Um, as we go through here, uh, I don't know if it's going to pick up in the light, but the Dean decal, let's see if we can get this guy on here for you. If I can get to focus, which I don't think it will. But anyway, there is air bubbles on the, on the logo uh, underneath here. Uh, when they stuck the decal down, there's air pockets in here and then they sealed it over, which is, you know, again, if it was a $500 guitar or whatever, okay, that's fine. But at $1,500, that's insane. I also found um, worn out screws, stripped screws, screw heads on here too, which hopefully you can kind of see down in here. You can see the nut screw right down in there and how that, that Phillips is rounded out. That's from the factory. Uh, also their choice on these screws to hold the, to the locking nut screws uh, is really, really curious because look how massive these screws are. Like who, who runs neck screws, nut screws like that high? That's absolutely insane. I don't know why they didn't use like a button screw, uh, but these things are monstrous. And even these have marks on them. If I can get it in focus again. You can see this guy right here, how it's marred up. Again, all from factory. Pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. All right, guys, so the biggest problem I have with this thing, uh, which was, I was like, okay, this is just absolutely insane, uh, is that the neck um, nut is not properly set up. Uh, and I noticed this because I had tuned the guitar and then I had strummed like a D chord and it was way out of tune. I'm like, what the hell? I just tuned it and I started diving into the problem and I figured out what's going on here and I will show you guys. So we have the E string. You can see that it's in tune with E. And then if you move up to the first fret, see how sharp it starts to get? Second fret, third fret. So it doesn't even stay, it doesn't even stay in tune. Like that's sharp. And I thought initially that because it's multi-scale, uh, if you have, you know, maybe I need to move the saddle for the string over so it lays on the lower part of the fret because it is at an angle. And if you move it, obviously that pitch is going to change. But that wasn't the problem. Uh, I adjusted that. That didn't fix it. I started looking into it and then I found out that the string doesn't come off of the edge of the nut. So when you're tuning it, you're actually tuning it at the uh, at the the lock itself, and not at the edge of the nut. And that distance, that difference in distance, is what's causing all this to become sharp. And I discovered this by um, well looking at it, which is going to be hard to show you guys. But if I press down right here on the nut, see how it goes sharp, and that sharp matches these other fret pitches. So it should be tuned at that, at that space right there. But uh, unfortunately, the way the string levels off, and I will take off my camera to kind of show you guys. Again, this might be kind of hard for you guys to see, but what is happening here is that this isn't at the right angle. So the string is actually coming off its resting point is this point and not this point. So it is actually like riding above. It's not making contact with this edge down in that, that little valley there. So it's actually coming off of the nut back here. So when you tune again, you're tuning it to that length. And then when you go to fret here, it's sharp. And if I push down in that, that string, it actually sits down in that deal and it pops back up. So it's not like laying over correctly on that part of the nut. 
Uh, what, that, what does that mean? Well, that means I'm probably going to have to get a new nut for here, one that fits right. Um, I've got this one laying around. This is from um, this is from a Floyd. So I'm going to try to use that because it will actually probably sit where it's supposed to sit in that bevel, in that little belly there. Uh, and I'm gonna swap out that and see if I can get that um, fixed. If I can get that fixed, then everything will be in tune. Uh, the curious thing here about this situation is, is that um, because I intonated it um, before I realized the problems back here, I intonated it at the 12th fret. So as it goes up um, here, like I actually corrected it back to being in tune uh, with E. Um, but as soon as, again, as soon as you come off of the open and work your way up, it's sharp all the way up and then finally like flattens out to being in tune at the 12th. And then, again, that's only because I adjusted the, I adjust my intonation forward enough to compensate for that before I realized what was actually going on. All right, so just as a review, uh, again, this is a $2,600 guitar. Uh, I expect to have to do um, string height, like like action height adjustments and intonation pickup adjustments as far as, you know, that's all like personal taste things except for the intonation. Um, and then neck relief, uh, you know, things ship or whatever and things can, you know, the wood needs to like settle back to different temperature humidity levels. Like I totally get that. Uh, neck relief was actually okay. But the fact that I need to um, level out the frets on this guitar is insane. Uh, the fact that the nut isn't installed correctly and that the strings aren't laying over on the proper location uh, at the zero mark um, is insane. And the fact that like that throws it out of tune, you know, all the way down the neck, it is beyond belief. It, you, you, like a $300 guitar stays in tune um, and has like the, the proper nut um, adjustment on there. So that's an, so again, this is $2,600 guitar and I don't see the value in it in the first place when the standard, you know, Exile with like the Floyd is what, like 1100 bucks, 1200 bucks or something like that. Um, so what, what they're charging like $1,500 more for what? It's the same wood. Uh, you know, yeah, you have a Kaler here, but you had a Floyd on the other one. And this bridge is only like 650 bucks. So, you know, these pickups are 200 bucks. So I don't understand. You can't use electronics as a reasoning. I think that it's so priced so high because it's the only guitar that's designed like this currently. And that kind of leads me to, you may be asking, why am I even messing with this? Uh, because I really like this guitar. I really like the concept here. Um, I think it's fantastic. Um, again, for me, it's perfect. Uh, so I want a guitar like this and I'm willing to put in the effort to make this right. Uh, I know what I'm doing, so it's not a big deal for me uh, to adjust this kind of stuff, but there is zero reason why anybody should have to do this. And the Dean factory uh, is just putting out junk. Uh, this is junk at that price, the, this price range. And uh, it's, I mean, it's just a fact. Um, and that's just beside all the drama that Dean has going on um, with lawsuits, endorsement deals falling apart. Um, that has nothing to do with whether I want to play a guitar or not. I do it because how does it feel? How does it sound? Um, in my connection with it, I don't really care from a business standpoint uh, well, if they're running their company into the ground or not. Um, so anyway, I am going to do a part two of this um, after I take off the strings, level the frets, uh, install a new nut, get everything intonated again um, and let you know if I was successful or not. But uh, if you're looking at this guitar or if you're looking at any Dean guitars in this price range, uh, stay away from, from it. Um, in my personal view, unless you want to go through this, uh, I would stay away from it. It's uh, pretty insane. So uh, again, this is the first review on Brutes Magoots and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a lot of talking, a lot of boring stuff, but hopefully if you guys are looking at this guitar, um, you get a real understanding of what you get. This isn't some paid advertisement and, you know, hoorah video where somebody gets a, this guitar shipped to them from Dean and they play it for a couple minutes and like, oh, this is totally awesome. No, this is like my money. I bought it. These are the issues that I've shown you. Uh, you can see these issues and uh, there is zero excuse for it. 
until next time, I will see you guys later and I will come back with a second video after I rework this. You guys take care.